Did a chilling pattern emerge between 1996 and 1997 in Claremont, Perth, Australia, when three young women, Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer, and Sierra Glennon, all vanished one by one in the same area? As the investigation progressed, did the missing persons cases evolve into something more ominous than initially presumed? What clues or connections led authorities to suspect that these disappearances might be linked? And what were the last known actions of these young women before they disappeared? Hi and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Let's have a look at the 1996 disturbing cold case solved by a small hint. Claremont, a neighborhood in Perth, Western Australia, is surrounded by Airline Street, Alfred Road, Lock Street, Bay Road, Stirling Highway, Congdon Street, and Stirling Road. It boasts a big shopping center and the Claremont Showground on the east side of Lake Claremont, with a lively business area along Stirling Highway particularly around St. Quentin's Avenue, hosting numerous shops and bars, including the renowned Claremont Hotel and Bayview Hotel. However, Claremont's notoriety extends beyond its vibrant atmosphere. The neighborhood became synonymous with fear and mystery due to the Claremont killings, a series of terrifying events that occurred between 1996 and 1997, considered among Australia's most chilling criminal episodes. Sarah Spears, born on September 12, 1977, had a memorable night out at Club Bayview in Claremont on January 27, 1996, but she vanished without a trace shortly after calling a cab to go to Mossman Park to stay with a friend. The major crime squad launched an extensive investigation, yet no leads or witnesses emerge. Just four and a half months later, on June 9, 1996, the grim pattern repeated when Jane Rimmer, born on October 12, 1972, went missing after a night out at the Continental Hotel in Claremont. Jane was a caring child care worker and nanny, close to her family, and her sudden disappearance sent shockwaves through the community. The major crime squad intensified their efforts, but still, no solid clues came to light. Then, on March 15, 1997, Sierra Glennon, born on November 20, 1969, disappeared from Claremont. Sierra, a successful lawyer with a brilliant mind and a vibrant spirit, left her loved ones anxious and desperate for answers. Despite the efforts of law enforcement and the community's vigilance, the fate of these young women remained shrouded in darkness. However, Jane Rimmer's body was tragically found by a family on a day trip in a forest about 40 kilometers south of Perth on August 3, 1996. After the body was found, the major crime squad was called, and a big team went right to the scene to get the body for an autopsy and start the investigation. The second part of the case was finding Jane's dead body. The place where the body was found was carefully looked over for any clues that might help find the killer. Detective Paul Ferguson, who was in charge of the case at the time, said that the police hoped it would help them find Sarah. Pathwest Pathology's Clive Cook confirmed that it was a murder because he found a deep cut on Jane's throat from a sharp object and defense wounds that showed she had tried to fight back against the killer. Also, because the body was so rotten, the forensic staff could not find any evidence of sexual assault. The cops in Western Australia set up the Macro Task Force to look into the case. On Woolcoot Road, less than a kilometer from where the murder happened, a kimono knife was found, which turned out to be the murder weapon. Also on the night Jane was killed, two couples who lived in Wellard said they heard a woman screaming and yelling. Kenneth Mitchell said that he saw a car drive away in the direction of where the body of Miss Rimmer was found. In fact, Another couple in the same area told the police that they remembered hearing screams that stopped in the middle of them. All of these pieces of evidence from witnesses and forensics pointed to the fact that the murder was done with a sharp tool, likely a knife. But the evidence did not confirm the murder weapon yet. Nine months after Jane Rimmer went missing, on March 15, 1997, Sierra Glennon, who was 27 at the time, vanished from the same area of Claremont, 
while walking home from a night out with friends at the Continental Hotel. Sierra was last seen walking alone on Sterling Highway around midnight on March 14, 1997. She was looking for a taxi. The macro task force took over the case of the lost person right away. Dennis Glennon, her father, went to a news conference to ask for help finding his daughter. He said, the way she was raised, she will fight. On April 3, 1997, the body of 27-year-old lawyer Sierra Glennon was found in a bushland area north of Perth, 19 days after she went missing near Pippadini Road in Eglinton. The body was partly buried in undergrowth. Miss Glennon's body was found by following a tiny rock path. Karen Margolius, who used to be a senior pathologist, saw that Miss Glennon's body was found fully dressed, but her black skirt looked like it had been pulled up around her waist. She wore a gold chain bracelet, earrings, a watch, and a belly ring, among other things. Before she died, Sierra Glennon was stunned for a moment by something that broke her brain. She had a wound on her throat that was the same as Jane Rimmer's. Scientists compared fibers from Miss Glennon's and Miss Rimmer's bodies and found them to be the same. They also found what they thought was the killer's DNA under Miss Glennon's fingernails. A few places on her skin were split, and her finger was torn and cracked. Sierra Glennon probably tried to protect herself, which is how she got these injuries. The bigger court was then shown photos of the area, which showed a number of broken trees where branches seemed to have been cut to bury Miss Glennon's body. The investigation kept going, and when Sierra went missing, it was clear that the same person was to blame. The macro task force was now desperate to find the killer and stop another murder from happening. Lance Williams was one of the main suspects. At three o'clock clock on a Sunday, the task force followed him as he drove around the streets of Claremont in his car. He was driving around aimlessly, and his weird actions, like driving around after midnight and making up to 30 rounds in the Claremont area, made the task force think he was up to no good. There were also sexually motivated actions, like giving women rides that added to the police force's rising suspicion. Lance Williams, who was mistakenly considered a suspect in the Claremont serial killings, denied any involvement and expressed distress over the accusations. Despite extensive investigations, the police found no concrete evidence pointing to the real killer. Initially, taxi drivers were the main suspects, but due to a lack of evidence, the focus shifted. The macro task force faced challenges, and there were discussions about disbanding it. However, after external reviews, the task force remained active, hoping to find the right lead to solve the case. With the help of the best forensic experts in the country, the special task force was able to figure out what one piece of evidence was. It was a kimono. But how did this Japanese traditional clothing help solve the case? Investigators got a big break in the case of the Claremont killing when they found a kimono on the side of a road on the outskirts of Perth. The robe looked out of place, which made the police suspicious. When they looked at the shirt more closely, they found DNA on it that did not match any known suspects or deaths. The police started looking into the case right away. They used advanced DNA research and compared the DNA profile to databases of known criminals. Tyne was running out to find a match and figure out who the DNA belonged to. The study on the Claremont killings was ongoing for several months until a DNA match led detectives to Bradley Edwards, a former technician for Telstra with no prior criminal record. Further investigation revealed his disturbing history of crimes against women. The detectives built a strong case against him, linking him to the murders using forensic evidence and witness accounts. Edwards was caught in 2016, and in 2020, he was found guilty of killing Jane Rimmer and Sarah Glennon but not guilty of killing Sarah Spears. He received a life sentence without the chance of release. The case received significant media attention, and the victim's family sought justice for their loved ones. Despite the pain caused by the killings, the resolution of the case brought some peace to the families. Australia was troubled by the Claremont killings for over two decades, but the persistence of the macro task force and advances in forensic technology 
helped solve the cold case. The closure of the case marked an important moment in Australia's criminal history, emphasizing the significance of solving such cases for the victims and their families. As the country moves forward, it is essential to remember and honor the memories of Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer, and Sarah Glennon. The case also highlights the hard work of law enforcement and the importance of never giving up in the pursuit of justice. The families of the victims can find some comfort in knowing that the killer has been caught and punished for his crimes, but the wounds caused by the Claremont murders will always be a part of Australia's past, serving as a reminder to continue seeking justice for victims. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.